In this video, we're going to talk about what protein quality means, including some calculations that you can use to determine the quality of a protein source. We're going to compare and contrast protein sources based on their amino acid content, their digestibility, and the protein package. We're going to define what a complete protein is and compare that to an incomplete protein. We're then going to predict the consequences of regular consumption of incomplete versus complete proteins. And then we're going to perform a particular calculation called a DIASS calculation to quantify the quality of a protein. Protein's an essential nutrient, but the type of protein you get really matters. The type of protein correlates with the risks of obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Shown here on the right is the effect of replacing an equivalent amount of red meat with other protein sources and how it affects cardiovascular disease risk in an observational study. You can see that replacing one serving of red meat with eggs, nuts, or plant-based proteins reduces cardiovascular disease risk by about 20%. There are three matrices by which you might want to consider protein quality. One is the protein package, one is how digestible it is, and then the third is which amino acids are present in a protein. The protein package refers to the other nutrients that are present alongside protein within a protein source. For example, this could be fats, fiber, or micronutrients. Shown here on the right are three examples. You can see that per 100 gram serving, steak has 22.8 grams of protein, but it also has 2.6 grams of saturated fat and 1.9 milligrams of iron. On the other hand, lentils contain quite a bit less protein, 9 grams, but then also contain 7.9 grams of fiber, almost half of the recommended daily intake for a woman. Digestibility. Not all proteins are equally digestible. Some proteins digest more rapidly than others. If you look here at whey protein, which is in light blue, and compare that to casein, which is in red, consumption of equal amounts of these two complete proteins results in faster absorption of amino acids for whey protein. That's because whey protein is very easily digestible. On the other hand, casein is digested much more slowly, so the peak of amino acids in the blood is much lower. That's because the underlying structure is different if you compare casein and whey. How about a complete protein? What is that? Well, a complete protein is a protein that has enough of all of the essential amino acids. This is only relevant for the essential amino acids because we can make the dispensable amino acids. If we look here, each column shows a protein source, and then each row shows the essential amino acid levels. Shown in this chart in red, you can see protein sources that have a limiting amount of particular amino acids. So for example, corn and oats both have limiting amounts of the essential amino acid lysine. On the other hand, green peas and soybeans are limiting because they don't have enough methionine or cysteine. If we look at human breast milk protein, quinoa, or egg whites, you can see that they contain all of the amino acids that are required in sufficient amounts. This means that they are a complete protein. If a person regularly consumes an incomplete protein, that means they'll be deficient in a particular amino acid. So for example, if a person's protein source comprised only of oats, they would always be deficient in the amount of lysine they were consuming. That can result in muscle breakdown and lack of muscle growth, among other phenotypes. There are three metrics to actually quantify both the digestibility and completeness of a protein. Common ones used are the PER, the PDCAS, and the DIASS score. In all of these, you calculate the content of the limiting amino acid, and then you integrate how digestible and absorbable that amino acid is from that protein source. We're going to go through a DIASS calculation as an example. What we're going to do is for each essential amino acid, we're going to calculate how much of that amino acid is present, and then multiply it by the fraction of it that is digestible. When we combine those two things, the amino acid that has the lowest digestible content is going to be the limiting amino acid. These are then compared to age-related reference patterns to figure out exactly what the score is for that particular protein. Let's go through some examples. For each of these protein sources shown in the rows, we're going to figure out the content of the four amino acids, lysine, methionine, tryptophan, and threonine. These four amino acids are the amino acids that are most commonly lacking in an incomplete protein. The content of those amino acids is shown in column A. 
And column B is how digestible and absorbable those amino acids are. If you multiply column A by column B, you figure out what is the digestible amino acid content for that protein source. You can then compare that to the requirements, in this case, the requirements for an adult. Dividing column C by column D gives you column E. That means that you have a score now for each amino acid relative to the adult requirements. If you look here at black beans, you can see that for the first amino acid, lysine, the DIAS score is 100. That means it has exactly the right amount of digestible lysine that is available. However, to figure out the total DIASS score for black bean, you find the lowest amino acid score. In this case, 74, the second one, which is for methionine. That means the DIASS score for black beans is 74. If we look at whey protein, you can see that the lowest DIASS score for an amino acid is 143. That means the overall score for whey protein is 143. Wheat protein, on the other hand, is limiting in lysine. You can see that the lysine content is low, and it's only digested at about a 40% rate. That means that wheat is a very poor quality protein. It has a DIASS score of only 25. Specific protein sources associate with chronic disease risk. That's not necessarily related to the actual protein, but can also be related to the protein package. We can assess protein quality by a number of matrices. Here I've talked about digestibility, amino acid profiles, and reference to the protein package. There are several ways to quantify the quality of a protein, one of which is the DIASS score. It combines both the amino acid profile and the digestibility of a protein to determine what is the completeness of a particular protein source. Understanding different proteins and what their health risks are involves us understanding is the protein a complete protein source? Is it easily digestible? And what are the other nutrients that are in that protein? All of those factors are important for indicating whether a particular protein source is beneficial or harmful to our health.